How are we doing, everyone? It's Friday. Maybe not. Is it Friday vibes? It's Friday. Maybe there's going to be a lot of frustration among United fans. We're here talking about greedy glazers. We're here talking about six billion plus price tags. And we're seeing a bit of a, a meltdown might be a strong way to describe what's been happening this week. But it's been far from straightforward, has it? With the deadline, the, well, the soft, is it a soft deadline? I suppose it was another soft deadline. Uh, the Glazers and then the, the bids are in, the bids weren't in. Oh, maybe they're going to, maybe they'll take the, so, so Jim and, and um, Qatar, they're out of the race. They're not out of the race. Come on, people. I'm here to hopefully try and dampen any sort of uh, mad overreaction that there is going to be. We are in the middle of an extremely public game of poker. And I'm going to run through the stories that happened yesterday from the Elliott Group confirming that they had put in a bid for minority investment to the confirmation that the Ineos bid has gone in. No, seriously, the Ineos bid has gone in. To Mike Keegan in the Daily Mail last night saying, oh, the Glazers want more than six billion, actually. Maybe they're never going to sell. Maybe they're just going to hold on. It's <laughs> OK, cool. Right. I'll run through all of that this morning. Uh, it, there's some si Josh, you described it down there. Um, hysteria, some serious hysteria going on. And I'm here to sort of take a bit of a, a sword to it. <laughs> I, don't know what, I don't know what that was. I saw this. Anyway. Good morning to everybody who's down here. Let's have a look. Um, oh, I can see you down there. What are you doing, mate? I thought you were on holiday. It's not the world's worst holiday if you've got me on your phone every morning. Seriously. Um, Dean Osborne, how are you doing on Facebook? Uh, Mikey, you're saying protests will get violent if the Glazers stay. Uh, and that, one thing I'll always say about the protests, they have to stay civil. They have to stay, um, yeah, non-violent. Otherwise, it flips and the protests become a bad thing and it will get slammed in the media and the press. And it will get used against Manchester United fans rather than for Manchester United fans. Josh, you're down there. And you're down there as well. Good morning to you, Paul. Uh, we've got Teresa. We've got Carl watching from New Zealand. Paula. We've got Amira. Julie. Matt Bird. Who's on Facebook? We've got Aidan Arrowsmith. Maria Cross. How are you doing? Paul Johnson. We've got Giovanni Begg. We've got Moose Moose. There's a loose. Moose. Arunis Hoos. Anyone remember that advert? It's a cracking advert. Anyway, it's Friday show. It's map day. So we'll bring that up a little bit later in the show. I, don't know, I always enjoy these ones. Friday's a cracking show. I'll tell you what, something that's really, really cool, and I want to say this at the very, very start. I've been speaking about things that are working on in the background. I promise that we're doing so much work to make it more of a compelling membership because so many of you uh, and, and the, the gifted memberships that constantly keep coming through, I want to do more for the community. Wine gums, that was what it was. Big, big up the wine gums. Um, so we're working on now creating brand new, a brand new set of custom emojis, 38 custom emojis. Now, it's going to be up to members. You can decide what emojis you want. If you follow the link that's in the, um, in fact, let me just pop the link down here in the in a comment right now. There you go, right there. There's going to be a form on this link, right? It will take you to a Google Doc form. And in there, you can say which custom emojis you want. And here's a little bit of a snippet and a preview about what we're talking about. Andy, big up to you, Andy, if you're listening and watching. He's going to be helping us by actually drawing and designing these custom emojis for the channel. So you've got one there, which is for Barry. Going to do it anyway. I think that's, that, that's absolutely cracked me up. I can't wait to do these. I think these will be really, really cool. So if you get things, we can maybe get one for a gongshi. That'll be a cool little emoji. Uh, and I'm sure there are loads of other ones that you would like to use in the comments as members. But that's just a bit of a, an example of what we're going to be working towards. 38 different ones, all custom ones that you can use in the live chat to make it more of an interesting place to be and, and a cool place to be. So that's that's just an example there. I'll go into the Telegram members only chat right now and I'll tell you what the password is. Uh, 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 right. I've literally just typed that in now. Any members, you can now use the form. Vote for what emojis you want. But how cool is that? How cool is that? Ah, <laughs> oh, Paula. Of course. Of course. <laughs> I already know that, by the way. Don't worry about that. We'll get the apostrophe in. The grammar police is out. And it is in the shape of Paula this morning. <laughs> Where's the apostrophe? What's going on here? Where's the apostrophe? Uh, but look. Let's speak about the... Well, come on. Here we go, right? 
where when it comes to takeovers, right? It shouldn't really be something that gets played out in public, right? It shouldn't be. However, things really are different when it comes to Manchester United. I've said this sort of like just take us take a second to 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 properly consume this idea and concept, right? We have not won the Premier League since 2013. 10 years. We've not won the Champions League since 2008. 15 years. There are 15-year-old kids who've never seen United win the Champions League. That's how long it's been. Yet, we are still, still one of the three biggest clubs in the world. Real Madrid, Barcelona, Manchester United. That's your top three. If you really wanted to argue, you could probably say, you could have a conversation around Bayern Munich and United, but I would still put United up there. Liverpool probably in and around that top five as well. But United are still in that top three. And that's where this incessant... Um, I mean, I try and do it. I suppose that, look, these... These shows, I suppose, wouldn't exist every single day if this constant desire for update, 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 now, 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 where is it, where is it, where is it, where is it, what's happening, what's happening, what's up, when, what, that happened three hours ago, what about now, 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 more, 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 quick, quick, quick. It's, 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 it's the way it goes in the media because supply never exceeds demand. It's incessant with Manchester United and it is hysteria. We are in the middle of a really public game of poker and a really, yeah, everybody's using the, their tactics. All three different angles. The Glazers and the Rain Group are going to try and use the media for their own gain and benefit. Uh, so are Ineos. So are the Qataris. All the different journalists are going to have their different sources. And they're going to be good sources because they're going to be linked to the three involved parties, the sellers and the two potential buyers. But you've got to try and take a step back and and not just react like mad to every single bit of news that comes out. And especially the article that came out last night from Mike Keegan. And that's what I um that's what I want to run through here. So if, if we go through things in chronological order of when they happened yesterday, this was first um coming from Matt Lawton at from the Times confirming that the Elliott group are putting in uh, an offer for a minority stake in Manchester United. That's actually a little bit different to what it originally was. We always thought that the Elliott group were just going to be there to finance other people. Hey, if, you, if you need some money, come to us. We'll pay for you. However, it's not just that. They're looking to actually buy a minority stake in the club. And that is dangerous as hell. Now, next week, hopefully I'll be able to do it next week. I'm going to be doing a proper expose, not a mini documentary, because it's only going to be a 10 minute video. So I suppose it is a mini, mini, mini documentary. But I'm going to be doing something on that. They're, no, they're what is known as like a, a vulture fund. Now, if you know what a vulture is, there's a dead carcass on the floor. Popping down, grabbing myself a meal. Lovely. That's what they do. They jump into situations where AC Milan, for example, desperate for cash. Desperate. Elliot Group, hey guys, how you doing? Yeah, go on in, we'll help you out. All of a sudden, their owner defaults on a payment. Elliot Group swoop in and take full control of AC Milan, flip it for a profit within 18 months, happy days. All right. They do that not only with businesses, they do that with countries as well, having been involved. And that's, that's what this video is about. They are so dangerous and it has to be spoken about more and that's what i'm going to do next week but off, off the back of that let me quickly go over here so i don't miss anything in the live stream this morning ooh, 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 ooh. there we go right oh damn i forgot to pin the comment oh no mind um anybody who hasn't by the way we've got six seven days left go down there enter the raffle for the ps5 i'm looking forward to announcing what the giveaway is going to be for next month as well but these are wicked these are really, really good. You can win a PS5 for a quid. One more. What more could you want? Let me see what you're saying in the comments. And look on the bright side. Our sale is still going to be shorter than our pursuit of De Jong. Less of that. Because it might not be. Because <laughs> it absolutely might not be. Um, 
The best way to describe Elliot group, Elliot management, as Sam Wise has put down there, more parasites. <coughs> more parasites. Man, go away. Stop giving me a cough. I don't even smoke. It's pissing me off. Anyway, yesterday this happened. No, this really did happen. Honestly, it actually happened. Jim Ratcliffe and Ineos, uh, the bid went in. The second bid got confirmed. We're expecting the second Qatari bid to go in today. And, yeah, I mean, the the delays and extensions, there were reasons that happened. And I think there could be some interesting developments that come out. I'll put it that way. Over the next week or so. This is, this is a far... F it's far from over, is what I would say. This uh, this idea, that just 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 take take a take a, a second to think about it. The idea that the Glazers are going to walk away from selling Manchester United for in the region of five to five and a half billion because they want more than six billion for something that is not currently worth anywhere near that. Laurie Whitwell in The Athletic. Uh, typically, buyouts happen silently with these kind of developments staying behind the scenes, but this has been a very over-courting for a variety of reasons. Look at this. The market capitalization of Manchester United, which is, of course, the total value of all the shares on the New York Stock Exchange added together. $4.3 billion. Manchester United are worth absolutely Nowhere near six billion plus. And I compare it to kind of how it's just part of modern football. When when clubs sell players, they don't just sell that player for what he is worth right then. They sell that player for what he's worth right then. And a little slice of what he's probably going to be worth in the future. And they probably add on a sell-on clause. So they get 10% of a sell-on fee. That's what the Glazers are trying to do here. And I've explained that so many times. I, I, I can't, I'll be honest, I can't be asked explaining it anymore to people. If you want to live in, in, a, in, a, in a world of hysteria and you want to be reading articles like this uh, from uh, Mike Keegan, Manchester United takeover hopes are fading with new bids set to fall well short of the Glazers' six billion valuation. They might walk away. Walk away where? They've got... And look, there, there, is, a, there is a reason why I set this as the thumbnail, right? See a poker hand there. Joel Glazer sitting there with a 2-7. Now, in my opinion... 2-7 is, I might achieve it statistically, but I don't know. 2-7 is the worst hand you can get in poker. Anybody who plays poker, that's why I think so anyway. 2-7, you can't do, you, you can do absolutely nothing with 2-7 unless you're lucky somehow and you sit there and you land trips on the flop, which you really shouldn't be in, especially if you've got to pay for it. Anyway, 2-7. The, the way that you'd read this, you'd think that the Glazers were sitting there with pocket aces. You'd think that they were just sitting on the strongest hand They've got the cards. Oh, yeah, they can do what they want. And it's just not the case. Jonesy's saying, sadly, you can win with a 2-7. Yeah, you can win with a 2-7 if you're a crap poker player. And unfortunately, the, business, the Glazers are crap businessmen. But if you... Uh, guys, come on. Don't get, too, don't, don't get too dragged in down there, man. Seriously. like You're distracting me massively there. My point here by using that as a comparison and an analogy is this idea that the Glazers are sitting there like they're on the strongest hand possible. They're on they're on the golden throne of Manchester United. But the the, the I look at this article. Look, as I said, Mike Keegan. Mike Keegan has been pretty spot on with the story from the Qatari side this whole way through. I'm not here just completely dismissing anything that he's saying because I don't like it. And therefore, I'm just going to ignore it. My point here is that the Glazers aren't playing with the strongest hand. 
Manchester United as a football club, our, our, our value is at its peak. And from this point on, without big investment, it goes downhill. They tried to buy their siblings out and they failed. Apollo Investment wouldn't give them the cash. The Credit Suisse collapse has massively offended, affected the lending market. I don't know how any lender could look at Manchester United, could look at the Glazers now and think it's a good lend. Given the value of Manchester United, uh, if you want to get into the real financials and the real details of it, Manchester United's market capitalization right there now is £3.5 billion. Pounds. <clears throat> so you're telling me that a bank is going to go and loan the Glazers £2 billion, pounds, which is what they'd need to redevelop Old Trafford, to redevelop Carrington, to effectively stay on as owners and leverage that debt against the club and they're going to give them a loan that's going to be worth nearly 50% of the club. What's the collateral for that? I don't even know the value of the other Glazer businesses or whether they could even do that. My point here is chill the fuck out. That's what I would say. Uh, probably didn't need to swear there, but sorry about that. My point here is that you do not need to panic. I'm not, I, 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 this, this could, this could well come back and, and burn me, right? The, the Glazers could stay. Or, I just, I just don't see a logical route for them staying on. And it's not just the fact that I want them gone, right? And I do want them gone. You want them gone. I want them gone. Every United fan wants them gone. There isn't really a logical route for them to stay in. Now, the concerns that we would all have would probably be around these guys. Around Elliot management. And what, as I said, I don't know what the Glazers, I need to do a bit of research into this. Look, because I know that the, the Glazer family had a massive um, mall business in America. And I don't know what the value of that was, but I know that that value has gone down. Of course, they've got Tampa Bay. It's not as if they could put Tampa Bay up as collateral for uh, getting a two billion pound loan at Manchester United. I don't even think that would be legal. That would be an interesting thing to actually do a bit of research into. The concept of the Glazers getting a two billion loan, where could they get that from? I mean, we don't need to go where, they, where could they get that from? What could they hold up as collateral against it? Now, if you don't know what collateral is, that means that if you were, if, if they got a, a loan out for two billion and then they ended up, they couldn't pay it, the collateral is what the bank would take away from the Glazers and say, right, okay, you can't pay that loan that we've given you. We're going to take all these assets that are going to cover us for that loan. That's what the collateral is. It's, it's, it's damage control from the bank. I don't even know if they've got two billion worth of things that they could take as collateral anymore. I really, really don't. And, and, and they might do. They, they genuinely might do. But I, I don't actually know off the top of my head. I'm going to go down to the comments and see what you're saying. Tom, how you doing, buddy? Tom Van Venruj. Venruj? Big up to you, Tom. Gifting five memberships. Andrew Inzaghi. Oh, big up. I used to love watching Inzaghi. He was great. Filippo and Simeone. Um, Linville, Adam B's, Spud. You are the lucky five. Let's give the gong a tickle. <laughs> I've got to stop saying things like that. Um, Spence, how you doing, buddy? You're saying, did anyone really think? Let me pull this up here. I think this is worth a real proper community conversation this morning. Did anyone really think that the most greedy scumbag owners of all time weren't going to try every trick in the book to squeeze every last cent out of this? No, I don't think. I, 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 don't, I, I don't know. I, I think it was may, maybe. I think as soon as a lot of United fans, maybe myself included to a certain degree, saw the idea of a Qatari bid coming in, it was just like, de, 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 as in, oh, there's no way the Glazers are staying. Let's go. I remember tweeting about it as well. There's no way the Glazers are staying. They're definitely going to be selling to them. <clears throat> but the thing, the, the, the thing that isn't helping Manchester United fans with this and with the Glazers is who they've partnered with. And that's the Rain Group. And apparently it's this bloke down here, Colin Neville. It's not actually Joe Ravitch. So I thought it was Joe Ravitch who was leading it. The rain group are whispering in the Glazers' ear. You can 
you can get you can get at least six billion at least probably more probably more and they are the ones advising the glazers on this situation and if your main advisor in anything in life is telling you something and whispering something in your ear you are going to be listening to that so you're combining the greediest owners you could ever put and uh, honestly the, it angers me so much when you really lay the greed out in front of you like <clears throat> when they bought the club they didn't buy the club the dad did for 750 mil there was only 200 million of their money 200 200 550 was a loan 17 years later over a billion pounds has left the club on servicing that debt which is still 550 600 million pounds and they've taken 160 million in dividends directly out of the club let alone for any directors fees and wages so they've nearly made everything back on the 200 mil that they've had and and we're talking about them getting 5 billion as a payout at the end of it in a lump sum and they want to fucking argue for six billion. I mean, come on. It's ludicrous. It is ludicrous. The whole thing is ludicrous. Their whole ownership has been ludicrous. You could say they've been acting the fool. Yeah, 10 points for me there. Big up ludicrous. Um it's 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 just it's madness. And what we're seeing here is is a is a PR power play. There isn't really any logic to the Glazers walking away from this. But genuinely there's not. The idea that and I and I try and I try and I try and put myself in in that um mindset and I and I and I try and think about it as well. Like why on earth would they want to stay in? Like what's the payout? What what's what's the end game? It must just be an ego rubbing exercise. Because if the end game is just pure money with the Glazers, the end game is right here. Huh? The end game is with either Ineos or with the Qatari bid. Because they're going to be, you're talking about a, a big old five to five and a half billion pound payout. Boom. Your bank account is never going to look bigger than it does at that point. So this, the hypothetical conversation and the hypothetical idea of it, of them staying on at the club, why would they do that? It can't be to make more money because you're not going to make any more money than that. That's your payout. So it must be partly an ego thing. Partly a, nah, I want to be the owners when this happens. I'm not paying for it, but I want to be the owner when this happens. And that in itself is something that is a, you could argue is even more dangerous because that's something that's not solved by adding an extra one, 200 million on, on, on it. It's, I, I, I don't know how you solve that. And that's, I've only just like sort of entertained that prospect in my head, but yeah, that's pretty terrifying when you think about it. But I, my main point here this morning, right? <laughs> my main point here this morning is, uh, try not to panic. I know the day-to-day -day around this situation is going to drag, just like it drags in the summer with every single transfer of Manchester United. I bring you the updates when there are genuine updates to be discussed because I follow it all. And that's what we're here to do as a community. I try not to be knee-jerk wherever possible. Sometimes my knees twitch. They do. Of course they do. I'm guilty as well. I'm not innocent. But my point here is that this, this whole thing, as The Athletic has described there, this... Typically, buyouts, uh, whispers in the background. Nothing goes on. Oh, here you go. Todd Bowley wants to buy Chelsea. Lovely. Okay. Oh, he's bought Chelsea. Hey, right, great. Go on then. With Manchester United, it's like a, it's like a triple threat hell in a cell. That's that, that's 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 kind of what it's playing out like right now. It's crazy. I used to watch wrestling all the time. I think we talk, I think we speak spoke about this before, didn't we? <coughs> Jim back. Ronald has a good, a good point there saying, reminder that your ego can destroy you. 
I think we've clearly said, you know, you know what's proof of the fact that that ego exists. You remember when the um, Qatari statement came out and they said they want to return United to the glory years and the Glazers were like, you can't say that. How dare you? How dare you say the, the utter truth staring you in the face? You can't say that. Makes us look bad. Their egos. Boy, almost as dangerous as their desire for money, if not more so. Jibak, how you doing, buddy? Thanks for Super Chat. I feel amazed at how oblivious USA is about the world. The bad press and reputation damage to the Glazers because of United isn't worth the money they're making. Mate, it's a massive bubble. They're not exposed to that. They're out in Tampa Bay. Somehow, Avram Glazer looks like he lives in a milk bowl. I don't know how he... Uh, how is he that pale? It's in, surely impossible in Florida. It's a wicked climate. Man, I'll be gloriously olive-skinned if I lived over there. Oh, well, no one. I'll just stay pale. But obviously, it is worth it to them. Obviously, it is, it is completely worth it to them. Let me go down here. Invest, you're saying, Sam, how much do you think the Glazers will pay the Rain Group after they sell this club? There has a, we don't know... Typically, if you sell a house, right, your estate agent is going to get, I don't know, what's, what's a standard fee? Two, three percent, roughly. Let's say it's two, three percent. What's two, what's two percent of five billion? I always get slated for my mouth here. One percent would be, what's that, 10 billion? I have no idea off the top of my head what two percent of five billion is. Either way, it's a lot of monies. It is a lot of monies. That's what I think. Uh, that's not what I think. It definitely is a lot of monies. Uh, let me go down here. I think I might. I don't want to miss this. Uh, Prince, how you soon? You're saying they want one billion for each of the clan. I think I want a penny for the thoughts of the other Glazers who were like, just, like Avram, Joel. Can you stop it? Can you just sell the club and give me my money? Seriously. I reckon that's going to, I reckon those sort of comments, their, their, their family WhatsApp conversation must be absolutely fantastic. Just a barrel of, barrel of laughs and everybody trying to assassinate each other. Des McBlake. Oh, thank you very much, Des. I've not seen your name there before, gifting membership. You just gifted five memberships. Thank you very much, dude. Feels a bit, I hate the word, but feels a bit ranty this morning, doesn't it? But I, I don't mean a ranty, rant in a, in a negative way. I mean, I'm, I'm a negative way towards the Glazers, I suppose. I wish it wasn't the case. Gen and I and I do genuinely mean that. I wish it wasn't the case that it's so two no man, two Jesus, two percent. Man, so much dough. Is it, I think we did this yesterday. Two five billion is so much money. It is so much money. Like this idea that you can go from five to five and a half billion. Do you have any idea how much five hundred billion uh, five hundred million is? Buy most football clubs. <laughs> It's insane. It is insane amounts of money. My word. So, yeah, if the rain group are probably probably going to be looking at a rat, if, I don't know, I'm, we're guessing here, but if it, if it's a typical sort of thing where an estate agent will take 2% of your house sale to help you through the whole process, if the rain group are doing that for the Glazers and they're going to be getting, I don't know, 2%, that's 100 mil. The rain group could go and buy some football clubs off the back of just selling Manchester United. That is madness. That is madness. Josh saying everyone who got it right went to Google. You cheat us. Cheat us. John, how you doing? A concern is that a shake will just go and buy Spurs. I'm not sure I'm ever going to be concerned about Spurs at any point in my life ever. Sorry, Spurs. That's just the truth. Well, I'm not really sorry. It's just really the truth. Uh, I'm going to keep I'm going to keep on this conversation for a minute or two before heading on to speak about this man. Hmm. I'll speak about that man in a little bit. Uh, what else are we saying in the comments down there? Did it, did it, did it. Paul Banforth. What do you think will happen with FC United if the Glazers leave? And the FC, FC United, of course, the football club that formed off the back of the Glazers taking over in the first place, they're, they're not going to change at all. They've worked for years and years and years to build up that grassroots club. And I hope it just continues to get bigger and bigger. But maybe those fans there who boycotted United will then start coming to Manchester United again. That could, that could happen. <coughs> Sorry about that. Uh, what else is he saying down here? Uh, Dean, you sent in a super chat. Let me read this out and then I'll move, I'll move on quickly. When the sale finally goes through, the rain group office will be like the Wolf of Wall Street. Mate, I don't know what that's going to be. They're just going to close their doors and just go uh, sod that. 
they 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 stand to gain from the Glazers' greed, and they are part of it. They are absolutely part of it. That's what I mean. This idea here, the Glazers, the Glazers. Why does someone always choose to ring me when I'm live? Come on, man. You know I'm live. Jermaine, what are you doing? Anyway, let's move on to. <laughs> I, I wish I could say let's move on to something that's more positive and something that is better. This stuff here. This is a bit crazy, right? So Thomas Ziliakis yesterday, you saw my video that came out. I was having an interview with Ben Jacobs and that went out yesterday evening. I'll run through that in a little bit. I was speaking with Ben and whilst we were talking, this bid, this bid, quotation marks, from Thomas Ziliakis came out. And we, we were both like, huh? Is it what he's doing? He's offering what? He's offering to, to buy half of Manchester United. And for Manchester United fans to buy the other half. So what, what, one second there. He wants a billion fans. A billion fans to pay $3 each to buy Manchester United. So I, I did my video reaction on that. And I saw the email at the bottom. So I was like, right, cool. I'll reach out to him and see what he says. He replied this morning and he's offered an interview. I'll be honest. I'm not sure I'm going to give it to him. I, I, I've, I see this as a massive publicity stunt. But he also included a second press release, which I'm not even sure has been released yet. But I mean, it might be. It might not be. But this is the press release that he sent out. Tom Ziliakis appeals to Sheikh Jassim and Jim Ratcliffe Let's work together for the good of Manchester United. <clears throat> this is what he said. Let's zoom in a little bit more so you can read it. Nobody buys a football club to make a lot of money. Question mark, question mark, question mark. We are all in this for our love of football and our love for Manchester United. I therefore appeal to my main two rivals, Jim Ratcliffe and Sheikh Jassim, to join forces with me so that we can buy the club together. By doing that, we can channel money for everything from player acquisition to stadium upgrades to the club instead of giving extra billions to the sellers in a mad rush to outbid each other. I, 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 I don't really know. I don't know what, I don't know what planet this guy lives on. I mean, he's, there's no proof of funds, by the way, at this moment in time. There's been confirmed that he wasn't in in the stage one of the process. It wasn't anything. It just kind of popped up out of nowhere. He goes, hello, lads. My name's Tom. I've got three billion, but I need another three billion. Max, what a gent down here. You're buying the other half. <laughs> Max, but we got a billionaire in the comments here, people. Everybody, Max, you're all of our best friends now. Right, we we all love you. Can I come to your house party? Um, but. <laughs> Imagine that. Hiya, Shake. Hiya, yeah. Hey, I just, yeah. Hiya, Shake. Just him. How you doing, mate? Yeah, I, I, yeah, I, yeah. I know, I know. I know your family's got billions and billions of. You fancy partnering? Fancy it? Go on. Do it for the love of the club. It's, it's a really odd. Uh, it was a really, really odd um, statement that came out. And it, it, it's only it's only a bit more odd. I think someone said that I missed a super chat there from Alex. Oh, there you go, Alex. Sorry. We're talking about what the 1958 have said. What did they release? Uh, a statement. I was speaking to that. I speak to those lads quite a lot uh, behind the scenes, but I don't need to tell you what I speak to them about. Because, uh, yeah, I'll keep that private for now. But they are... Oh, nothing, nothing up to date on that. Oh, come on. Nothing there. <laughs> But this, <clears throat> this is weird. This is really, really weird. You know, the, um, I think I told you about it before. There was this, I can't remember the name of it. Don't need to, don't care about the name of it. There's, I kept getting calls from these guys from Ireland who were tr saying that they were going to put a consortium together to try and buy Manchester United. And it came out, what was it, two weeks ago? And it was the, um, what is it? 
they said they weren't cryptocurrency. They were based on the blockchain. But the idea was that every, every United fan bought an NFT and it all went into this. And all of a sudden, if you get a billion fans buying it, you got enough to buy the club. Woohoo! Club fan ownership. Woo. I'll be honest, it's the dream. Yeah. We're looking at dream owners. It is that it is the buy the buy Munich, the the Bundesliga model, 50 plus one fan ownership. However, I just don't think it's possible, if I'm being completely honest, at a club at the size of Manchester United. <clears throat> the money's involved. It's just too it's too phenomenal. It's too big. Imagine, and I, and I this is what I did yesterday. I got, I got annoyed because I couldn't find the research. Let me pull this the stat up for you. I know everyone loves a good stat and a good fact, right? Just so you can understand how crazy it, how crazy this concept is. Right. Let me bring this up here. I tried to get this stat and fact whilst I was doing the reaction video yesterday, but I couldn't find it. <clears throat> so this dude, Thomas. Hello, Thomas. How you doing, mate? Pops up out of nowhere. I've got three billion. All I need is three billion from all the fans around the world. He needs a billion fans to sign up for his app and pay three dollars for the privilege. These are the latest figures on TikTok users worldwide. You can see there just shy of 840 million people. He wants a billion, a billion United fans to sign up to his new app. It would make that app one of the most powerful apps in the entire world <laughs> with one of the biggest user bases in the entire world. It's such a mad concept. It is such a mad concept. Stephen, you're saying he's already spoken to Ben Jacobs. Apparently, I was, I was speaking to Ben. I know he has. Uh, we both agree uh, on, on, on what we're doing with Thomas or what we're not doing with Thomas. <clears throat> he's getting laughed away by every single party involved in this whole process. No one's taking him seriously. And why would they? Right? It's, it's, you're looking at somebody taking, uh, taking a stab and using the spotlight and trying to turn it on him. It's a PR grab. Public relations. He wants a bit of attention. I mean, technically, I've just given him five minutes of attention, but it's not exactly positive attention, is it? My point is, I'm not going to interview him. It's not going to happen. That bid's never going to go anywhere. I'm not even sure. It's not even a bid. He's not even shown proof of funds. Madness. Madness. Uh, and Scott, yeah, this idea that United's got a billion fans. I mean, they might do. They might do. Yeah, Paul, bless him. At least he tried. Well done, Tom. Well done. You can go and do like a TED talk about how what you did there or something like that. Sure he could. But yeah, I spoke to Ben yesterday and that's where the this story broke whilst we we're having a conversation. Um, I'm really enjoying these conversations with Ben. Ben doesn't uh, present himself as, oh, I've got all, oh, I'm in the know. I know everything that's going on. Come here for inside exclusive scoops. He's just, he's just very, he's got a good knowledge of an understanding of the whole situation from all the angles. And like every journalist uh, in this situation, Ben's kind of getting a little bit played. Everybody is. Because of, of how much it's uh, to and fro and this is being said, but that's being said, the bid's in. No, oh, the bid's not in. It's not that there's crap journalists. It's the crap. It, it's, the, it's the fact that this situation is just, it's far more dynamic than it should be. When it comes to transfers, you can expect this sort of thing. Somebody saying one thing, but ultimately, doing something completely different that you would expect at transfers but on the in something of this size you wouldn't expect it with the sale of a club in excess of five billion charlie you're saying did not expect this circus and that's what i mean none of us expected this circus but then we take two seconds to think who are our owners not you thankfully and then you go you know what yeah, I'm not surprised by it whatsoever. And until they leave, they will continue to leave scratch marks on your soul as a United fan, won't they? The Glazers. Man, there's... Uh, 
It's going to be a case study. Massive, massive case study. A horrible case study of bad ownership. It's going to be the press. It's going to... It was depressing. It, there's literally... like There was a Glazer rule added into the takeover of Chelsea of what they weren't allowed to do because of what happened to Manchester United. Oh, man. My, 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 my word. My word. Um, what are you going to say this? Spence saying you're always going to get a circus when you're owned by clowns. I hate clowns. My sister made me watch it when I was... Jenny, you're not watching. I know what you did. Made me watch it when I was like seven. I was haunted for years. I'm still scared. Of, I'm still scared of clowns. I hate clowns. Clowns are not a good thing. I was going to say something else there, but I'm not going to say it. But I don't like clowns. But look, in, in more positive news, to wrap up the show here, <clears throat> um, let's talk a little bit about the international break, some positives, also a couple of little snippets on transfers, and then we'll pull the map up. It's going to be good. All right? But this is the big positive from yesterday. Luke Shaw. <laughs> Luke Shaw playing for England. He's like, nah, man, I need a rest. Boom, gets two yellow cards in the space of two minutes, gets sent off. And I think, I'm actually not sure, um, but I'm guessing that means he misses the next game. Is that, does it work? Is that the same in internationals? Does it work everywhere else? He should have a one game ban, which means he misses the next one, which means smart thinking from our man Shaw. That's a week and a half rest for him. Marcus Rashford, he's got two weeks rest. Big up. Rafael Varane, he's retired from international duty. He's chilling somewhere. Nice. Christian Eriksen, he's going to be back at some point in April. Big up, Martial. Maybe. That's all you could say about Martial is just, yeah, maybe. Some serious rest for some important players in our first team. Now, Bruno Fernandes, stop playing well. Just chill out. Go and have some of the chicken curry that got all the Dutch players ill. Go and get some food poisoning for a couple of days. No, go on. Go on. Go home, please. Just chill. But it, it looks good. It looks good. Robert Taylor, you're saying Rashford gone to New York. Yep, he went to New York. He's chilling out, enjoying his time off. Absolutely, as he should. But that's good news for the international break. Maguire getting some game time. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I mean, he did get some game time, but it was kind of Pete Maguire yesterday. Pete Maguire. You know, the thing that happened yesterday, which was a, a massive curveball, and it was really, really weird. See this? Out of nowhere, by Munich, Sack and Julian Nagelsmann. Despite them being one point off top in the in the Bundesliga, through to the Champions League quarters against City. I mean, City are your favourites, and they still are favourites with Tuchel. But come on, Tuchel, you did that in the Champions League final last year. Make it two years in a row. But Sack and Nagelsmann and getting in Tuchel was just like, what? Where did that come from? And I saw yesterday... That the um do, they paid Leipzig sixty five million for Nagelsmann. Then they paid twenty five million up front as a fee, and agreed to eight million per season for five seasons. So a total commitment of sixty five mil. And they've sacked him what like eighteen months? Two? I don't know, I don't know how long he's been there, but absolutely wild. Wild, and you know what I say to that, and I kind of feel a little bit sorry for Sabitza for even suggesting this. We got to get on this guy in the summer, <clears throat> Ryan Gravenberch. I think if Ryan Gravenberch hadn't already um, agreed to join Bayern Munich before the Eric Ten Hag to United situation happened, I think this kid would already be playing for us. Honestly, I do. He was the player who came through the Ajax Academy to replace De Jong when he went to Barcelona. He was the, the, the one that followed in De Jong's footsteps at Ajax and ended up becoming a fantastic player there. I think he only signed for like 20-odd mil. He costed probably a bit more than that. Of course he would. And he's a different sort of player to... If we're looking at upgrades in this squad, this Manchester United could this summer sell McTominay for in the region of probably... I think 30 million is a fair amount for McTominay in the market with his experience, with United, all the work we've done with him. 30 million there. 
We sell McTominay. We put Sabitza where McTominay would usually play, playing further up. Then you've got McTominay, Fred and Bruno, who can play the sort of more attacking of the midfield positions. And then you've got Casemiro. Then you've got Gravenberch. And then you've got Ericsson. <coughs> you haven't really spent much more there. Uh, Sabitza is going to be, I don't know, what? 20, 25 mil? That's what we're hearing. Gravenberch, you're looking at... Uh, how much do you think Gravenberch would cost, actually? That's a good question. I think he joined. Let me see how much he joined them for. It was something stupid. As in, it was really cheap. Because uh, I think he was a uh, was he free agent the year after something like that. Uh, Graham Birch joins Bayern München. Twenty five million euros. Come on, twenty five million euros. Jeez. But look, but think, but just think about that. On paper, there you could have. Casemiro alongside Ericsson or Gravenberch and up and then you've got Bruno in the number 10 role where he should be playing every week and if you haven't got Bruno there you've got Sabitzer and Fred to sort of come in and dominate and be that sort of aggressive pressing midfielders when you need it or certain games you'll play Bruno and Fred or Bruno and Sabitzer sometimes you drop Sabitzer into a deeper position you would have midfield balance and partnerships and options galore Let me see what you're saying down here. Ruben, you're saying Enzo Lafay would be a cheaper option. Lots of you are talking about Lafay, and I'll look into him a bit more. Hmm. What do I want? Cheaper, or do I want a player that Ten Hag brought through and knows inside out before he's even kicked a ball for Manchester United? Bingo! I don't care about fees. I care about profiles. And anything you can tell me about Enzo Lafay, I guarantee you this guy ticks more boxes. Guarantee you. United, United forever, you think 40 mil for him, 50 mil, um, uh, about 35. No polls today. Sorry about that. I sometimes forget. It's really annoying how I can't get, how the mods can't do that. I've, I've mentioned that to YouTube. Mods should be allowed to start polls. Stupid. Really, really stupid. 30 to 40 mil, 35 to 40, 40. I've got no idea if I'm being totally honest. And maybe, hey, look, maybe this is something that actually helps Ryan Gravenberch. Maybe he's now going to, all of a sudden, Start in that team. I don't really think so. But I think this is one to watch this summer. I'd be very surprised if it, if it wasn't a conversation that Manchester United were at least entertaining. Because I think behind the scenes, we are... It, it might hurt Ten Hag to say it, but I think we just should just ignore De Jong and look elsewhere. It's not. It's not. It's not admitting defeat. It's accepting that a player doesn't want to leave. Therefore, look elsewhere. That's what I think, anyway. Um, swap deal with Donny. Well, no one's going to swap deal with Donny. Um, Donny van der Beek, I, I, I'll be honest. I, you know how I've checked out with Anthony Martial? I've checked out with Donny van der Beek. Maybe he'll prove me wrong. Right? I, I, and maybe he will. But I personally... I've checked out with Donny van der Beek in the same way that I've checked out with Anthony Martial. I've given enough energy to that. That's what I think. So anyway, I might be, you might say I'm being a bit harsh in saying that. And I kind of am a little bit, but I, <clears throat> I'm being a little bit ruthless because we have to be. Take the sentiment aside and look at the, everything that's Ah, I don't need to waste, it, waste time talking about that. Jay, how you doing, buddy, man? Buddy, man? Is that a thing? Apparently so. Gifted five memberships. Little tickle. Can you actually hear that? I'm sure you can. I'm sure you can. <laughs> or we're sorry. Sorry, mate. I'm checked out with Donny. All right. I've done, I do feel bad for him. I absolutely feel bad for him. Not 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 bad for him enough that I wanted to stay at Manchester United and just to sit on the bench and occupy a squad space that I think could be given better to a young to a U team player now at this point. My personal opinion, of course. And I'm not saying that your opinion's wrong. And that's the beauty of opinions. No one's opinion is incorrect. It's an opinion. Alex, how you doing, man? You're a ledge. But everyone say thank you very much to Alex and to Stu and to Max as well, who's helping now, who are helping me behind the scenes with building the launch version of the website. We're hopefully going to be launching at some... I'm not going to put a date on it, right? We're going to be launching some point soon. <clears throat> 
and it's going to be it's going to show you all the features of the website. I'm really, really excited to do it. The newsletter has been delayed a little bit. Uh, I've been working on that, but now I've got to start again. It doesn't really matter. It'll get done. And we've got the custom emojis getting done. I can't remember what else we're doing. New designs. I've got a new merch design ready to launch. I'm just not launching it yet. I'm waiting. I'm waiting. Ricardo, you've mentioned the big buzzword there. I haven't forgotten about it. Don't worry about that. Daisy, have you thought about doing Twitter spaces, Sam? I mean, I don't know how many more things I could actually do. I don't think Twitter space. I could technically do a Twitter space. But I don't. No, it's not necessarily always more content is good content, right? But big up to everybody. Who wants to come on the map? Oh, look at that. Ishmael, you just sent in a um, a super chat. You're saying you're in for Jeddah watching from the Saudi. How hot is it there right now? It's hot. Here you go, sir. I don't think Jeddah was on the map, actually. But it is now. Uh, big up to whoever reached out to me yesterday. But also, that's super chat again. Big up to whoever reached I can't remember your name. I'm sorry. Someone reached out to me on Instagram yesterday with some tips from Marrakesh. Thank you very much. I'm going to note those down. Uh, if anybody else got Mar Marrakesh tips, you've been there before. That'd be awesome. Who else have we got down here? Right, Remember, what you need to do, you need to let me know the town and the country. Not just the country, because as you can see, lots of countries are covered. So the town and the country. Let me see who we've got down here. We've got Matt watching from Astana in Kazakh. I'm not actually sure we've got one on Kazakhstan here yet. Let's have a look. No, Kazakhstan is currently empty. Well, it was empty. Until now. First badge in the great Kazakh. There we go, sir. Look at that. Let's see who else we got down here. Uh, ba, 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 da, ba. Who else have we got? <coughs> Sorry about that. We've got Lesla. I'll, I'll read some more out. There, there's so many down here. Mumbai, India. Paramibo in Suriname. I'm not sure that's on there, actually. Is that on there? Is, that, is Suriname a country? I know that sounds a bit dumb of me to say that. Para... No. Sur Am I spelling that right? Oh, no. Para Maribo. Oh, where is that? I need, to read, I need to research that bad boy. That's a pretty cool one. Uh, Stockport in England. You're on the map already. Uh, we've got Geneva, Switzerland. I've been to Geneva. I drove the whole way to Geneva one time. It was a long old drive. Uh, Chicago, Illinois, that's definitely on the map. We've got Netherlands, we've got Sweden, Australia, Malaysia, New Zealand, Mauritius. Um, Philippines is on here. Let me get one more. We've got John watching from Stjord. Stjord? Stjord? Stjord. 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 In Norway. Awesome. Fjord. Great word, Fjord. I haven't been to Norway. But I'd like to go to there at some point. We'd like to go to all of Scandinavia, really. Look, I, they're awesome. I love this community. I can't. At some point, we're going to have to integrate this map into the website. I don't know how I'm going to do it. I'll try and figure that one out. But it'll be cool if you can sort of like look around the map and see where everyone is and see see where all the all the points are because there's 414 points on that map. Oh, that was um, a kind of different show because my point here is is try not to get too downbeat on the day-to-day -day of this. Try and level out the highs and try and bring up the lows. If you see, uh, if you see that uh, Qatar are the heavy favourites, and I've covered all of this, and I've been excited about it too. <clears throat> don't get too excited about the good news and don't get too downbeat about the bad news. This is all a public game of posturing and gesturing. I've said it and I've called it that I've, I feel that the Glazers are playing with like a 2-7 in poker. A really weak hand. But they're trying to play it strong. And they're playing it strong because they got the rain group whispering in their ear. You can get more money. I know it's not worth it. But stay firm. You can get more money. They're playing a game. And it's dangerous. Because at some point, Ineos or <coughs> the Qatari bid could walk away. They're not walking away now. But we're at that stage now where it's clearly a game of poker. And we'll find out, I suppose, over the next seven days, what the next card is on the table. Uh, Andre, thank you very much for joining in the member, mate. <coughs> My God, go away. Seriously, pissing me off. Anyway, <clears throat> thank you so much, everyone, for joining in. I need to go and have a sip of water. Have a cracking weekend. When I come back, by the way, check out, I don't know, I'll, I'll probably share some photos this weekend. 
I'm going to be rebuilding this whole studio. You can't see it here. It's a big job. I'm looking forward to it. And it's going to be a big upgrade. A big up to all of you. Much love.